Hey, deserving listeners, love is blind. Let's watch. Respect for her? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Do I think that she has respect for other women? Absolutely not. Do mm -hmm. I think she's selfish as hell? Absolutely. Do I think she's immature and still has a lot of shit to work on and figure out? Yes. Mm -hmm. But he's the one that made a commitment to me. He's yeah. the one that owed me something. Yeah. This is the most hurtful. Yeah, I, I like that point of view. I, I, I mean, I, I, I don't know about the adjectives being used for Sarah. I don't know Sarah, but... I think it's something that you could conclude based on what you'd hear because, uh, well, it really depends on what happened. You know, like if when they talked at the bar and Sarah was like, hey, um, how does Laura, are you still with Laura? Yeah, I'm with Laura. Um, well, is this okay that we're talking, you know, because Sarah wants to talk to him. It's okay. And Jeremy said, yeah, it's fine. We're basically broken up anyway, or she'll be okay with it. I told her, or I texted her or whatever, you know, who knows what Sarah knew. And, you know, Jeremy, God knows what he told her. Is it also possible that Sarah knew that Jeremy and Laura were engaged and living together? And yet she, at the very least, just uh, played around in terms of the boundaries. They didn't get together, but they were talking all night. And as you know, in Sarah's shoes, you're just like, I don't care about how this looks or I don't care about Laura's feelings. And, you know, there are some points of view. It's just like, well, Sarah's not cheating. Sarah and Laura were apparently at least friendly in the pods, but um, Sarah doesn't have a commitment to Laura. It's Jeremy's issue. But, you know, I think most of us would say it's not a good choice, but the person that committed the transgression completely was, was Jeremy, even if they didn't get together, particularly because of the way he came across. If he, you know, he could have done all that, come home, told Laura and said, look, I'm so sorry. I realize how this looks. And uh, let me tell you what happened. And this happened. And I, I thought about you and I thought, uh oh, like, what time is it? But you know, she was crying. and I felt bad. I didn't know. You know I don't even, you know, this is just me making sense. It probably isn't even really what happened. But you know, there's a version of this story where he's like, demonstrating that he was thinking about his fiance's feelings, even if he wasn't planning on marrying her. <laughs> Just thinking about another human being's feelings, right? Just he had, he exhibited nothing, and then when he talked with his mom, you think, well, maybe he was just defended in the moment with Laura. He exhibited the same callousness, just like I don't know, whatever. Even if he faked his way onto the show, you would think that at least he would fake remorse <laughs> or have remorse, right? Even if you faked, and particularly if you faked your way on the show, because that's some psychopathic shit to just mess with someone else's life like that. But I don't know. Am I just an old person? Is it just except, because I, I was talking with my hair cutter about this, that, because she'll tell me that, you know, she, she watches The Bachelor and Bachelor of Paradise, Bachelorette, all that stuff. And I, I don't, I've watched bits and pieces on this channel, but uh, what people will say is, you know, 25 years ago or whatever, I don't know when The Bachelor started, that it started out legit where people were legit looking to marry someone and the the ending couple was, you know, legit that they were sincere. Over time, because of all the fame and how the show grows, the at least the perception is that no one goes on the show sincerely. It's just a game, and it's just like a farce, like you know, wrestling. No one thinks wrestling. You know, wrestling is real in that they're really jumping off the <laughs> the, the from those heights and landing on on someone and could be injured, but it's not real in the sense that they're actually in competition. It's more of like this very violent choreographed dance with some improv and some some chaos, right? And when people watch wrestling, they're into it, right? And they hand themselves over to the spectacle and they they put aside their knowledge that this isn't real. And I've been there, you know, I they have local wrestling in Seattle, local wrestlers and I, I love it. I you know it's it's fun. You know it's like I don't know. It's a spectacle. So with Bachelor, is that what it is? And I don't know, but that's what I've heard. And I worry that Love Is Blind will become that, or it has become that. That people go on the show not intending. Now season four, which wasn't that long ago, there are three couples that are still married today. <laughs> so obviously they didn't just go on the show for shits and giggles, or shits and gigs, as um, Darren or Daryl says on uh, Step Brothers, one of my favorite movies that I watch every three and a half months. 
I just did it for shits and gigs. Anyway, <laughs> Adam Scott. So obviously there's a group of people that didn't, that didn't go on the show for shits and gigs. And I don't know, it looked like Marshall and Jackie were on the show legitimately. Maybe even Josh. I don't know. Who else was that season? Uh, you know, Brett and Tiffany, Zach and Bliss, Chelsea and Kwame, uh, Irina, hard to know. Micah, hard to know. Paul, I don't know. He looked maybe legit. Um, so those are the main players. And uh, that makes it so much more enjoyable to watch. Like The Bachelorette, at least it's kind of like an absurd premise. And you know that many of the people will never end. You know, by definition, only one of the contestants will be with the person in the end. So you kind of know like, well, you can't be that invested because <laughs> you're one of 30 or something. Whereas on this show, it's completely different. There's, there's someone for everyone. And without the the verisimilitude, is that the word? Without the truthfulness, it, it, it just loses all of its appeal to me. So to hear about or to, to imagine that Jeremy would go on the show without any intention on, on actually trying. But even with that, even if you did go on the show without, well, I'm not going to marry you. I'm just going to go on because I think it'll be fun. There are other human beings you know, it, it, if you do something and just to get on Instagram or something, and it only requires like, you know, like sometimes Jimmy Kimmel will be walking around with a microphone on the street and he'll be interviewing people and people will act like they're dumb, act like they don't know geography or something, you know. Uh, where's United States? And then they point at Russia. There are people that will do that fake because they know if, if they're smart, they won't get on the show. But if they do something silly, then they'll, you know, like they do something wrong, then they'll end up on the show and they, they want that fame or whatever. And they can point to all their friends and say, or even go on Instagram and say, of course I know where the United States is. I was just acting that way. Aren't I funny? You know, people do that. Well, the lie to the public and to Jimmy Kimball, you know, it's, it is what it is. But to lie to another human being in the pot, you would have to do that. And you would have to decide to do that every minute, every second you're talking to another human. It's not a production that you're lying to or the audience. I mean, you're doing that too, but you're lying to someone that might be there in all likelihood is there for legit reasons. And you are tricking them to fall in love, not just in love, but to get engaged, which is the, it's above love in a lot of people's minds, right? Introduce to your families, commit to a wedding date for how many days and how many hours? And then to, I mean, you just think, so, you know, so if we go with that guess that Jeremy goes on the show, he, so he's, he's either heavily defended and has serious issues, which is possible, or he's actually a psychopath and has no empathy and doesn't even know he doesn't have empathy, or he went on the show for illegitimate reasons maybe mildly thought something would happen with Flora, but very quickly, you know, the way he was flippantly making jokes and everything, it just it has that look that he just was making fun of the whole process, right? Uh, you know, sort of like Micah and Irina when they were laughing at Amber, when Amber got broke, broken up with from Paul, Micah and or Irina said afterwards that they were in an immature mindset that they thought it was reality TV and that no one really cared. And they were sort of laughing at Amber because they didn't know that anyone actually was there legitimately. I think they said that, or I speculated that or something, and that did kind of make sense. It, it's still immoral to look at someone crying and let yourself believe that it's okay to ridicule them and mock them and sneak up on them and laugh at them and spy on them and ridicule them while you know cameras are watching, you know? Anyway, so can you tell I'm worked up? Because it's real. I don't know what really happened, but there's a chance that this happened and it makes me fucking angry that you would have, I mean, it ruins my experience because you're, you're bought in. You know, if Jeremy was on this show illegitimately, only five couples made it to the end. Like we want to watch a show and you're just going to, you're just going to ruin it by, def by de and, and then, it would be one thing if you got into the pods and you uh, just made it so that, you know, like you don't pick anybody because you're not there legitimately. That's one level of harming other human beings knowingly. 
it's another thing to agree to graduate, you know, take tons of action to get a ring and to, you know, propose and to act and then get to the other face. I don't know if this is happening, but then he is like so flippant about it. Like it, it, even, so even that storyline doesn't make sense because you, you, you would carry it through to the end. You would go to the altar and you'd say all the right things and then you'd say no and you just sort of avoid revealing anything, go through the motions, or you would have some kind of fight or... I'm just not feeling it. I'm sorry. You know, I, I, I got to break up. Or, you know, just, then you leave and you meet up with Sarah or whatever. But to just, he's going to the bar <laughs> late at night. And he said it was like 1045 or something. And then, oh, Sarah's here. Oh, meh. And then he goes and then Sarah comes up, hugs him and walks away. And then he's like, well, wait a second. He chases her, according to his story. And then stay with her all night. Come home. And just be like, what? What do you think? I don't, pff. Right. And then with your mom, it's just like, I don't know. She was really on my case. I fucked up. I don't know. What are you going to say? He, he didn't fuck up. Fucking up is making a mistake with math on a math test. That's a fuck up. Making hundreds of choices to not only do what he did, which is even in his story is still bad. God knows what they really did. And then to continue making choices with Laura to just treat her like utter shit the next morning. What are you going to say? I don't know. I'm going to wear my sun. I mean, I don't usually mock people, but that's mockable. <laughs> that's mockable. Now, I will hold out for the possibility that he's suffering on the inside. People will do this, and they will have all sorts of weird bravado around them to protect them, and they're deeply, deeply sad. And there's a chance. You are going to think of them yeah. in all situations. It's no longer you. It's a we and the way it was handled after, you guys, when I left, I didn't hear not one word from him. And said, I'm moving, I'm going back to my apartment. I need a break from this. This was my real ass. Okay, that's interesting. I somehow figured that, but I didn't know that. And so, yeah. <laughs> the callousness, the callousness, even if his story is true, it's so callous. So callous. Fucking life. Yeah. This was my real ass engagement. He ain't, he ain't it, sis. He ain't Thank it. you. Mm -mm. Thank you. No. Yeah, and just imagine doing that to somebody. Just, just imagine. I can't imagine. And that, I think, says something. And I'm trying to remember the last time we saw something. I mean, Matthew was particular, but that was a different sort of particular. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the last time that we saw behavior that was this callous. Even though, even if you go with his story, it's not like a huge deal, at least to me. Uh, it's a deal, but it's not like a. It's not like if he didn't cheat, then, and if it is just now, he didn't say. Here's what we talked. To. He didn't even offer that up. I mean, it doesn't it? Kind of matters, but he didn't try, right? You know, you got Stacy and Izzy and Taylor and JP and Elia and Uche and Johnny and Chris and um, Lydia and Milton, Tiffany, Brett, Zach Bliss, Chelsea Kwame. I mean, Irina and and Micah, I would put in that category in the pods when they were laughing at Amber. And then a little bit when they were like talking to Kwame, because, you know, remember Micah dumped Kwame and, and the pods and, and Micah's like, here's two people getting dumped or something, just that lack of awareness. But I don't, there's something, Jer Jeremy is a step above. Uh, Alexa Brennan, Matt and Colleen, Zanabin Cole, Raven and SK, Nancy Bartice, Ayana Jarrett, Danielle Nick, Natalie and Shane, Deep Tea and Shake. Shake. Um, I, I wouldn't put him in my scale up there with what with what Jeremy has done, but you know, there were things. Mal and Sal, Shayna and Kyle, Shayna, we heard at least there were allegations that Shayna was like uh, pretty uncool to, uh, uh, to Natalie, but I think there was some ambiguity regarding the accounts. You got Lauren and Cam, Amber and Barnett, G, G and Nina and Damien, Jessica and Mark, Kelly and and and, and Kenny and Diamond and Carlton. Yeah, 
this does take the cake. This is far and above the most callous. You win the callous award, Jeremy. Like, that's, this is where I'm at. I don't think the guy ever cared for me. I think he was fake as shit in the pods. I don't know why he came here. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, even if he was legitimately there, someone in her shoes would likely think that. But I, I don't, it, it, it's possible. And I think he has feelings for Sarah and he doesn't know how to process. Hey. Yo. Okay. <laughs> so he's here. Of course he's here because production wants him there because they want something to happen. And I guess I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> now, if I were Laura's friend, I'd be like, oh, that sucks. Now, maybe Laura's fine with it, but... I'd be like, do you, you want to leave? Do you want to? Do you want to go? Because <laughs> yeah. Uh. Oh no! Oh fuck <laughs> me! I'm sweating. Yeah. Okay. I, I wondered if they all knew he was going to be there, and it's also engineered because they have to allow everyone to settle in. They can get a bunch of footage, and then the, it was similar with Shayna, and you know, it, it's a reality TV show. So on the scale of production management i would say you know it's it's not it's not up there in terms of manip harm it's not on it's not high in the scale of harmful manipulation it's manipulative but it's not up there. laura has the power to drive home or walk away also everyone it all i hope everyone's on laura's side so it's not like she doesn't have power in the situation so so yeah but <laughs> but I, i'm kind of here for it because I, I want more data it, Maybe he feels bad, and he'll he'll show that he feels bad. Uh, and maybe it took him a while to come around. Hopefully, really. Front. <laughs> What's up, man? How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, fuck I, knew, time. I knew you would have a Hawaiian shirt on. How'd you know? How'd you know? I just knew it. I was, I was ready. To, I was ready to push it today. At cool. At calm. At collected. <laughs> Honey, I am cool, calm, and collected. I'm stressed out. I'm stressed out. Well, Who's down there right now? Also, why is he here? Uh, what? Under what circumstance would you want to be here? He must be some sort of shake guy, right? He wants to troll. He want, He thinks it does this work? It probably does to get fame and power or notoriety. It all goes back to Puck from Real World. You should... <laughs> 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 the exact person Laura's I don't here. want to fucking Maybe. see right now. Laura and I, we haven't seen each other in four days. We haven't spoken to each other in three days. Honestly, my last conversation with Laura, she really jumped down my throat to the point where I'm nervous to, like, even speak to her. She jumped down my throat. <laughs> That's the narrative. She really, like went off on me uh, she she was so unreasonable i mean i don't know it's not exactly what he's saying but it sounds like he has not come around thing i say seems to get spun in a completely different direction and i i made out to be the bad guy i was texting with her on <laughs> it just keeps getting worse spun in a bad direction i mean uh, maybe a little if he contends that the truth is what he said, right? Because I guess the only thing you could point to is that Laura was saying, because they only had that one conversation, and Laura was saying, you were laying the groundwork to be with her anyway. And then we saw that little snippet, and he was actually. He was like, we'll see each other. He could argue, ah, I didn't really mean it. I was just being nice. Doesn't seem like it, but who knows. So there wasn't any amount of spin. <laughs> it was just, I mean, I guess the spin would be the accusation that he did actually get together with her, but that doesn't really matter. Mainly, what I would focus on is, you know, whether you cheated or not, the way that you are treating me right now, <laughs> that's the issue. The way that you didn't even care to think about my feelings last night even if it was it, you know even if what you're telling me is true that the fact that given how new our relation you know if we were 15 years in and you knew I could depend and trust you based on 15 years of trustworthy behavior but I I don't know that so and it's the person you know Sarah really so the fact that at no point did I enter into your mind as someone that you 
cared about. You know, like I said this before, but it, he could have done all the same things, but he could have called Laura, maybe even left voicemail and said, hey, honey, I, I'm calling you. I, you're, it's, I think you're sleeping, but I am with Sarah. I want you to know. And I'm doing this because I feel bad or uh, I just, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not getting together. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'll tell you everything tomorrow. Or a text or some, you know, some care. There's nothing. He didn't. He didn't indicate any of that. He didn't even fake that. So how is it spun wrong? And then he says, "I made out, I made out to be the bad guy." <laughs> his only complaint was that she would criticize him about his Hawaiian shirts, which I will agree with. But on the scale of things, <laughs> it's it's funny. If he's trolling, it's working. Let's rewind. Laura and I, we haven't seen each other in four days. We haven't spoken to each other in three days. Honestly, my last conversation with Laura, she really jumped down my throat to the point where I'm nervous to like even speak to her. Everything I say seems to get spun in a completely different direction and I, I made out to be the bad guy. The editor and the producers must have been thinking, oh, this is TV gold. This is going to play, you know, and sometimes you wonder like what's being edited out, right? But I can't imagine anything being edited out based on both of their accounts. They have barely talked. They only talked for a little bit the next morning, and it was pretty brief. <laughs> I made out to be the bad guy. Wow. So he's either lying and trolling or confused or something. Chance heavily defended, or he has no empathy. If you know him, take note. I was texting with her on Wednesday, and basically all I got in return in text messages from her was nasty fucking answers. I tried sending her flowers. She's like, you don't need my address because I don't need anything from you. Oh, okay. Well, so they have had some interaction that we haven't seen. So, okay. I have a feeling that Laura responded with, I don't want to talk to you or get out of my life or something. It's it, it, The way Laura was talking, it sounded like she's just like done. And she seems like the sort of person that wouldn't get hooked in, you know, like the way Jimmy would. But, uh, but yeah, I tried to send her flowers. <laughs> yeah, if I were Laura, especially with Laura's personality, I'd be like, fuck that shit. You're not going to, I'm not going to allow you that satisfaction. That's stupid anyway. But I'm not going to allow you the satisfaction of, of being able to tell other people that you gave me stupid flowers after what you did and how you treated me. Never mind that you stayed out till five in the morning with Sarah, but the way that you went about it and then the next morning, that's the shit right there. I don't know if Laura consciously thinks that, but that, that's what I would focus on. And then follows that up with, it sucks to know that your name went from fiance to just Jeremy in my phone. In what fucking world would I try to fight for something like that? <laughs> Wait, so he's saying he was fighting? He was texting and sending flowers trying to win her back? Okay, uh, that's possible. There's uh, there's no evidence of that, but you know the edit could make it look like there's no evidence of that. I mean, I don't blame Laura, but at least I don't think I do. I, I guess I'd have to see those texts. You know, there's a chance in the text he's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I was so wrong. I, I was, the cameras were there. I have this tendency to shut down and you were right. I, I, I should have done this. I should have done that. Um, I'd like another, you know, stuff like that. Do we think that happened? I was 100% on board with working things out with her and trying to solve things like that. But I learned a lot about her. Uh, I don't know if she was angry or if that's how she was actually feeling about things. But even if you're angry, I don't want to be talked to or treated like that. Yeah. And it's it's hard to have a conversation with someone who just runs away from something every time they get frustrated. Admittedly, I think you are both. Okay, well, hard to know. Uh, I'll I'll allow that to be a question mark as to what those interactions looked like. But given what we have seen, both what he did and then the next morning his 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 revealing it to her, and then him talking to his mom, which I think was just later that day. And even, and hearing this as well, you know, it'd be one thing if he was just like, yeah, you know, I tried to tell, like, he's not saying anything. Like when he said, I'm try I'm being made out to be the bad guy. <laughs> like in no world, I mean, let's just say we exaggerate what he's saying into some redeemable situation where he was, you know, apologetic over text and being 
very non-callous and showing a lot of empathy. And, and she's just like not having it. Even if that happened, which I doubt, why would he then say, I'm being made out to be the bad guy? That's not what you would, if you're capable of fully apologizing, you're not capable of then concluding in the end, even if you did all those things to say, I, I'm being made out to be the bad guy. You would say something like, I, uh, um, she, she, she's not forgiving me, and I feel like she's not giving me a chance. That kind of language. You could still say that that's sort of myopic, but you wouldn't hear someone say, why am I being made out to be the bad guy, right? That, so that points to the high probability that in the texts, he was not actually apologizing and, and probably using those phrases that we hear on this show, which is just like, hey, you know, we committed and let's give it a chance. And if he's saying that, Occam's razor, he just wants to continue being on the show as evidenced by the fact that he even showed up to this party, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, there's a chance that, like, he doesn't know he's a shake, but he is a shake. <laughs> there's a chance that he is just operating as himself and then accidentally backs his way into being a shake. But, you know, fighting for someone, I mean, I'm kind of dealing with the same thing with Chelsea. Like, there's a couple things she said that she didn't even mean. Mm -hmm. But um, once we talked through those problems, it was, there was a reason to fight for it, you know? I wasn't, um, I wasn't given and you're not getting any reasons yeah. like at all. I wasn't given, even if she didn't explicitly tell you, it doesn't take a genius to imagine what the reasons might be. <laughs> I wasn't given reasons. I'm the victim. Damn, there he yeah. is, Bobby! Is that Trevor? That's Trevor. That's Trevor. When Trevor shows up, now there's going to be love triangle action with Chelsea. But Trevor and Jimmy get along well, so... But he cut his mullet, so does that mean that Chelsea will no longer... Because what did, was it Chelsea that said, I, I fell for him because he has a mullet. <laughs> he said he had a mullet but he cut his mullet. That seems like, because it's, you know, it's just a couple weeks later, you'd think if you commit mullet on a reality TV show, you're gonna hold up. Maybe he cut it not knowing he was gonna come back on the show. <laughs> I don't know. It is a better haircut in my view. I'll, I'll say that. Oh, I miss you. I don't wanna be involved with the conversation talking to Jeremy. I don't wanna be there. Oh, he's, Jeremy's his he's best bud all of us. Oh, what happened? I'm sorry. It's all gone, man. Oh, oh, come here, man. Oh, I miss it so on. much. He looks good, though. <laughs> Trevor is normally what I go for. Yeah, it's going to be quite a trip to finally see them in the flesh, people that you basically fell in love with in the pods not that long ago. You know, there's some love triangles. Wait, is Jess going to show up? That one, that one would be juicy. And if you were production, you would have Jess come in last. Because in terms of the story and the narrative and the oomph, Jess would be the the finale. <laughs> and Trevor would be second and Jeremy would be the lowest. Because I, I don't know if that many people care about <laughs> about Jeremy at this point. And I don't think anyone thinks like, oh, what's Laura going to do? Laura's just going to tell him to screw off and she's going to be with her friends. But Trevor, you're like, well, maybe there's a little bit of love triangle drama that we can go on, but... I don't think Chelsea's going to be like, at worst, I think Chelsea would be like mildly flirtatious with Trevor, innocently flirtatious-ish. And Jimmy's not the sort to flip out. Although I could see a scenario where he will, after tonight, will go to her and say, you did what you yelled at me about. If I were like you, you would be screaming at me. You know, that's a scenario that some people in Jimmy's shoes will do given all the, you know, attacking and hostility when they finally see it in the reverse, they're like, wait. And then they use it as a, not because they care about the incident, but they are trying to put the other person, they're asking for empathy. They're trying to force empathy. It's never a good, a good position to be in where you're trying to force your loved one into a scenario where they 
at least are in your shoes in reality. And then you're like, that's what it feels like to be in my shoes all the other times. You know, that's just not a great place to be because hopefully your partner can extend themselves into your shoes without having actually been in your shoes anyway. But just coming, just her being there, God knows what's going to happen with Chelsea. Beefy, muscular. It's interesting to see him and like put a face to the voice, but <laughs> it's, it's complicated, yeah. <laughs> That's a beefcake right there. All right, well, let's adjourn there. And everyone, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.